Hi, welcome back to the channel. This week, we see if we can create Ableton Live drum rack like racks in Cubase. Let's get to it. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is add the source. So that's going to be, in this instance, our trusty Groove Agent. So here is Groove Agent in all its glory. So what we're trying to achieve for those not familiar with Ableton Live drum racks, we want a synth, not a sample. We want a synth assigned to each one of these drum pads. The reason for doing so is because I quite like to synthesize each one of my percussions, but I also like the drum rack workflow of having each of the percussions on a pad. So first of all, let's put a kick on C1. To do that, we add an instrument track. In this case, I'm going to use kick two, obviously. I'm then going to choose one of the kicks from my Psychic Vibrations pack. You can find the link to this in the description. I'm just going to go with one for now. Let's have a listen. In this scenario, I have the keyboard mapping turned off. So what that means is that any key plays the same kick. That makes it very easy to map into Groove Agent. So we can do this one first. Currently, Kick2 is waiting some kind of a MIDI input. So what we can do is we can say receive MIDI from Groove Agent, which is here. If we go to Groove Agent, what we need to do, just a bit of a trick, we need to add a sample to the pad, otherwise it won't trigger. So in this case, I'm going to choose just a simple percussion. And when I click the pad here, you can actually hear already that you can hear the kick and the snare overlaid. We obviously don't want to hear the snare, that's just to make sure that the pad is actually triggering. Let's turn the volume of that pad down. And now we can hear the kick. Let's rename it. Kick. If we do the same for C sharp 2 and press it again, we hear the same, but that's not good because we only want to hear the kick on C1. So if we go into kick 2, we go into the MIDI inserts, click here and we do MIDI modifier. We now do range to filter out the, the notes we don't want. So in this case, we want note filter and we just want note C1. So the min minimum and the maximum to be C1. So if we press this again now, we hear the kick. We press C sharp 1. Nothing, just the snare. So again, let's turn this one down, kick, and nothing, kick, nothing. So we're getting somewhere. Let's now add another track. Let's add an instrument. In this case, I'm going to use a snare from my Dream Drops pack. It's in percussion, drums, snare one. And we go back into the MIDI modifier and we do range, note filter. Make sure you do the upper one first, otherwise it gets confused. C sharp one and C sharp one. So they're both exactly the same. Now if we click on C1, kick, C sharp one, we have a snare. Yes, we're getting there. So rename kick, rename snare let's add another one once again from the dream drops pack we're going to go with a open hat this one here that's going to be on d1 add the sample volume down midi from it's already picked it up it's already picking it from Groove Agent, so that's good. MIDI modifier, we said D1, so we want note filter. D1, that's the minimum. And now we have an open hat on third pad. Let's rename this. This is the snare. Open hi hat, so kick, snare, hat. Let's just do a bit of housekeeping. Let's add a folder. Call this drum rack. 
Now we should be able to go into the MIDI editor. Let's just do one bar for now. Click on the parts that we want. So we had indeed C1. There we go is the kick. Sounding good. So we have our four kicks. Let's put a snare. We know that's here and there. And our open hats on D1. And now let's play this back. And you should theoretically hear the kick, the bass, and the snare. However, that's not the case, is it? We can only hear the kick. Now, I can't quite work this out because we have them all sounding here. They're all perfectly fine. Even when we go to the MIDI editor, and we click on the keys, we can hear that all there. But for some reason, when I play it back, they refuse to all sound. Incredibly frustrating. So close and yet so far. It's almost as if Groove Agent is running out of memory or processing power that it can't keep up with doing them all at once. But I'm not sure that's the case because the, the piece, well, as you can see there, the CPU usage is what, a quarter? And um, I think even that is overstating it because it is quite a powerful PC. So as frustrating as that is, I have another solution that does work. Let's add an instrument. Go to tell a drum, which is here. And if we move our MIDI part up to tell drum, we then need to reassign our MIDI. So instead of coming from Groove Agent, it now comes from tell drum. Tell drum in all three scenarios. And now when we play it back, we can hear them all playing. So it's something particular with Groove Agent. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to use Groove uh, Tell Drum. Let's rename this one to our hat. So now that we have them all playing back, we can see that they're playing on the key that they're mapped to within Tell Drum. So in this case, it's a D for the hat, but we know that we should be using C3. So we need a way to transpose that. If we go back into the MIDI modifiers, we have two options. We can do a MIDI insert or a MIDI modifier. Currently, I have it as a MIDI modifier, but what I prefer to do is turn this off and then go to the MIDI insert and put the MIDI mod modifier in as an insert. The first one, we do exactly what we just had before, which is the notes filter. We This one was D1, and the minimum is D1 also. But the second step now is to add another MIDI modifier, and we need to transpose it. You can see that we're two octaves below. So we need to go into MIDI modifier, transpose that up two octaves, and we should be at D3. And then obviously just back that down by two because we need to go back to C. We'll play that back. So now we have the open hat playing on C3. Let's add one more so we can get a full loop going. Serum. Again from the Dream Drops pack. That's base one. This one is on D-sharp zero. So that we know that in our filter, we need to do range filter, max D-sharp zero, minimum all the way up. And now when we play D-sharp zero, actually I was wrong with this. Tal is actually one octave lower for some reason. So you just need to change it. So it's it should be one octave higher in Cubase. So that's D-sharp 1. Now if we go to the MIDI and go D-sharp 1, we should hear our bass. Perfect. Let's program something in. Just very standard side trance. I want it to be an E, so we need to transpose it by one to get it into E. So there we go, we have on Tell Drum, we have every one of these pads controlling a 
sound that is linked to a synth. You can do the transposing in Teldrum as well. I know there's the function to do it there. I just prefer to do it in Cubase though. I just like the workflow of that. So now I find that really quite manageable and neat to have that. So if we get rid of Groove Agent, because we know that that one doesn't work as intended, we have them all self-contained in this drum rack folder. So yeah, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some inspiration on how to create your own drum racks. And if you know why the Groove Agent solution doesn't work, then let me know. I would love to hear that. But for now, I'll continue to use Teldrum as the trigger. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.